Okay, Rabbi Isai. So we have the Geshmak is Sugi of Tzeda. Tzeda is one of those malachis that it came out, you could say, you have a, sha, a Shabbos cotton. Malachis Tzeda is a, a Shabbos cotton in them. It's got all of the inyanim, whether it's Psikresha, whether it's Eintarch Legufa, and just a lot of Geshmak is Shailas also. Obviously today, we're going to have to focus on the Geshmak is Shailas. That's what time allows us, Bez Hashem. And this is focusing Berach on really, on Simen Shinta Zayin. But I want to just start with the words of the Ben Ishchai. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the words of the Ben Ishchai in Shana Aleph, in Parshas Veira. He says, Shabbos is me'ein o'ilam abo. And the remez of Shabbos is that it's a, a, a quasi o'ilam habo, which is, of course, this man of the Geula, and this ain sham mitzuda. There's no traps. There's no hagbalas. In o'ilam abo, we're free. We'll no longer have the trap of Shibid Malchias, the trap of the Goyim. We'll no longer have to say the things we say. We have to be careful how we say it, with the view of the Goyim accepted, etc. Nesra by Atzeda. So on Shabbos, there's no Tzeda, because Tzeda is only in the Chayl, only in the Zman of Golis. Yisrael Anitzad Vayimid in that Golis, in that time of the weekday, which is like a Mem Stuma. It's like a closed mem. But on Shabbos, there's no tzeda. Our starting point, Rabbi Tzai, is the me'ein o'ilam haba. The Shabbos, the me'ein o'ilam haba. Let's try today, Bez Hashem, to get into that me'ein o'ilam haba, where trapping is forbidden. And we'll see that the me'ein o'ilam haba is the etz and melacha of, of Shabbos, of tzeda. The melacha tzeda itself is such a gishmak and melacha. The zalein is the me'ein o'ilam haba. Let's see what time allows. We have a lot to get to, Rabbi Tzai. I'll go somewhat sif by sif. I say somewhat because there's certain parts, like I, saw, I showed in the Marmachimus, what I wanted the Oilam to focus on. And, but let's see. The Etzim Dover you need to know is that Seda is one of the Lamed Tes Malachis. And in the Mishkin, they would trap animals. They would trap things for their animals, for their skins, etc. Or could be other Inyanim that were trapped. But the Malacha is to trap an animal. You trap an animal, yeah, uh, certain animals. Is it malachat say that say the deraisa, say the gemura is chayim atayir? What do I mean, say the gemura? So that's the part that we're probably not going to go into so much, which is the gemura in many different places. The dafayim yidin yidin just learned in beya daf chavdalid. In other places, the gemara in shabbos. It's a small parak by his side. Daf kufav kuf zayin. You should take a look. Kuf ches. It's a small. It's only three plot. The whole malach of tzeda. And over there. Tzeda Gemura is when I trap something that is within my grasp. There's another type of Tzeda where he's almost within my grasp. I just have to, you know, I still can't get him and I'd have to run around. But basically what comes out from the Shulchan Aruch is if I can get him with one running, that's a Tzeda Deraisa. But if I can't get him with one running, one running, so then as long as he's in an enclosed area, that's a Tzeda Derabanan. Now I'm going to tell you everybody saying, there's another Tzeda which again, most of this part we're not going into, and I'll go more, I'll say to the Marmachimus in a moment, I just want to give a bit of a background. The, there's a type of tzedah where it's not a tzedah at all. It's where we're not misyachis to it at all that anything was trapped. So for example, if somebody sees a bug flying into a room and he, he traps the bug, he closes the door. Of course, the bug is not trapped. It's not within his grasp. It's not at all. No one sees it, that there was a shlila of his cheris, that his uh, freedom has been taken away, and that wouldn't even be a drabana. So we have deraisa, it's within my grasp. I can make one running and I can happen. Drabanon is when you trap something, you can't catch him, but he's trapped, he lost his freedom. And then you have something like a fly in a, I don't know how far you take this, maybe a deer in a stadium, Yeshladen, but something that no one sees as being entrapped, as losing his freedom. And that would not even be a deraisa. You see that idea in the Paiskim. That's what I say. The sugh is that we're not going to so much go into. I guess so much going through, and that's really where Sif Aleph is. Uh, uh, mostly, that's what it's discussing, right? And that idea I found back in the Chachani, in the Chachani, in Perak Aleph, in Chelik Aleph, in page 120, he says, "You take a deer and you trap him in Yerushalayim in a city. You know, there's gates in Yerushalayim, and you trap him in there. It's not called he's trapped. It has to be that this ep is some form of a of a trapping. It has to be something that there's some form of a trapping, and that's a a sugya that we're not going to talk about. That's Hakdama number one that you need to know about Seda. The next Hakdama of Seda you need to know about Isai is that the Torah was only Mechai of you on a Seda of a Min Nitzoid. That means it has to be a type of animal that people trap. Now, Abba don't get confused. 
What do you mean? I trap bees. I trap flies. No, no, no. Nitzit means the word nitzit here doesn't mean something that you, you, the verb that you trapped. It's more of an adjective. I don't know if you guys remember English. I certainly don't. But it means something that the description of this type of an animal, something that you trap to have as for a collection, not something that you verb, that you trap, that you go and physically trap. Nin nitzayt is the Torah was only mechaev a certain chshivas. Which type of an animal did the Torah mechaev you on? Only an animal that it's the derech to keep. It's a derech to have for its skin, for its meat, for some other reason. I don't even know. Are both like fireflies? I don't know. I'm not sure. Fireflies, I remember when we were children, they used to trap them. It's kishmak to have them. It's a collection. You want them. Mashen came when you trap something to get rid of it, but nobody traps for the purpose of owning it. We'll talk about bugs and flieglach and flies and all types of zachin. That's called an ein b'mina netzay. Normally in the klalim of Hilchus Shabbos, you would have thought that this is called like an ain't sarach lehufay. I'm trapping it not to have. Here, it's not that, Rabbi Isai. Over here, when you trap an animal that's an ain benina nitzay, it's an animal that's not the derech to be trapping. So then, it's not a derais at all. It's a type of an animal that doesn't have the chashivis that the Torah is mechai if you want. And that's an isid rabbanon. Nonetheless, but it's not a deraisa. And in Seda, it's very important to know what's derabanan. You now just learn two derabanans, Rabbi Isaac. You learn number one derabanan is if I'm trapping something, but it's not within my grasp. I can't really get it. It's, it's, it's not within my grasp. I trapped it. It doesn't have freedom, but I don't have the ability to catch it now. So that's only a derabanan. And now there's another derabanan that just learned. The only time that it's a deraisa is when it's a certain type of an animal. If it's a type of an animal which isn't a derech to trap, it's not a deer, it's not a... We'll have to see. Is a cat the derech to trap? Maybe, maybe. Or has it said not. We'll have to see. But, you know, is a mouse... Maybe in the laboratory, but a regular mouse, certainly not a rat. That's an aim the meter nitsa. So then to trap a bug and a fly and these things is already a starting point with Rabbana. So let's say, for example, I have a fly, the marshal, and I want to close my uh, closet, says the Shulchan Aruch and Sif Gimel and Sif Dalit, where he discusses these in Yonim. I have the fly flying around in my closet, and I want to close the door of the closet. Why well, you want to close the door of the closet? I don't want to close the door. So now... Is it a Maisa Bikavana? No, I'm not trying to trap this fly. Is he going to get trapped inside the closet? Yes. What is that? That's a Psyk ratio. Is it Nihle? It's like Nihle. If I could turn this into two Drabanans, so then the Mishabura Shulchanar says you could be maker, you can close the closet, even though there's flies in there. I have a garbage, one of those big garbages, you know, and I want to close the garbage. Right? Of course, you want to close the garbage. You don't want cats to get in, you don't want the whole matzah, but you know, inside the garbage, there's bugs. So now, let's see. Bugs is a derabanan. It's a mina nitsa. Nobody traps for a bug collection. If you got a guy who traps for a bug collection, he's an interesting guy. And can I get it? I don't know if you can get it. First of all, the second you open up, he's going to fly away. I don't know if you can get him at all. So now it's a psyche ratio. It's loy nichle. I certainly don't want the trapping. It's a mina nitsa. That's one derabanan. And now there's a second derabanan is that maybe he's not within my grasp. Psyche ratio, loy nichle, two derabanans is mutter. It, we'll see him it's Hashem as we go along. Other examples and other things, but that's why it's very important to learn when you learn Seda to know what's their Isa <clears throat> and to know what's their Abanan. You know, I'll just give you an example. You got this Geferlich mosquito and he's buzzing around, he's driving everybody crazy. And then you see him, he's on the window. He's on the window and you see that the screen, well, he's on the screen, excuse me. You see he's on the screen on the inside of your bedroom. And you know that he's got plans to keep you up the whole entire night. Now everybody's like, could you trap him? No. It's still an Isidur Abundant to trap him, even though he's aimed the mean and it's right, but you can't trap him. Uh, but now you say, look, look, I'll close the window. What happens when I close the window? So now he's going to be caught between the window and the screen. So let's see. Do we have the term that we spoke before? Let's see. If I'm closing the window because it's, I don't want the air conditioning to go out, so now he is getting trapped in the melo. That would taka be the head that we just described. It would be psikresha. It's taka nichle, okay, because, you know, I don't really want the bug to get in, but it's psikresha. And it would be two drabanans. It would be ein bemina netzai. And number two, I might not be able to trap this mosquito. We all know how difficult it is to trap mosquitoes. So it would be psikresha with two drabanans. But in our case, it's a little bit worse. In our case is I'm closing the window in order to get him out of here. This is a hard case, Rabbi Isai. It's a psikresha? Well, I don't know. Maybe that's a kavan of tzedemamish. 
maybe I'm actually trapping the, the mosquito because what am I doing? I'm trapping him. Now it's true. Mitzidi, if you would ask me, I'd be happy that he wouldn't be here at all. I'd be happy that he can fly out, right? But I'm trapping him in order that he shouldn't get in. It's true. I'm not trapping him to have him. I'm trapping him to get rid of him. So this Abayisai is very not push it because now all it is is a Maisa de Kavana to go and do an Issa de Rabbanan or to do a double de Rabbanan. But this Abayisai, let's say, for example, there's a hole, a tiny little hole inside this mosquito net and whatnot, which I say a lot of times it is. Because, you know, we know we have the screens and we know somehow the mosquitoes get in. So there's usually holes underneath and whatever. So now so we can start talking. Now it's not a secretion necessarily anymore. So now we have to talk. And Amir Tashem, that's Akdama. And then we'll try to get into it case by case and shlav by shlav. And let's see what we can get to Abbas Hashem. So the Maisa, the Shulchan Aruch, in Siv Beis, and that's really where we started giving my Mekoyimist. The Shulchan Aruch in Siv Beis is a Gemara and Shabbos Dav Kuvav. Hatzot Svi Suma V'yashin Chayiv. If you trap a blind or a sleeping uh, deer, so then you're Chayiv. What's the Lundus? Because the Pshat is, the second I grab him, he'd run away. So therefore, don't think that if he's sleeping, you have him, he's within your control, he's going to run away. So therefore, you Chayiv in a Torah. But the Gemara and Shabbos and Kofav and Mebez goes on, and the Gemara starts as a very interesting Shaila. The Gemara discusses that what happens if I have a deer that's not well in a Dur And it's something that's really mamish trappable. He's not running away. So do we say that that's called he's fat trapped? He's got an inner trap inside of him, and therefore it's not called that you're doing a Maizet Seyde Bechlal, because he's, Ke'ilu, he's in a trap. He's Ke'ilu in a trap. And this Rabbi Yisai, you should know the Rambam holds, in this case, Yitak Chayef. But Rashi and the Graz brings down, and we mentioned before the Ben Chai, they bring down that if he's Chayla, he's got this din of Chayla Machmas, this side, and even if he's Chayla Machmas Ayefis, he's very, very tired, right? The Rambam says if he's tired, that's not called Chayla. But the Graz and Rashi, they say even if he's Chayla Machmas, his mom is tired and whatnot, so then it's not Seyda Deraisa. It's only considered it's say the Durabanon. Ad Kirikach, the Bir Allah has a suffix. What's the din if I take an animal and I run after him and I run and run and run until he's totally tired? He's totally tired and I don't go and catch him, but I made it that he's trapped. I'm also tired and I made it that he's done. You know, now I could just get him. So the Bir Allah says that maybe you're not high in this case because it's ain derech say the Bekach. The derech tzedah is to, you know, run after him and grab him. But even though you made him in for trapped, and if he would have been in this matziv on his own, it could be you're not going to be chayiv in tzedah because you didn't do a, a tayalis of, of getting him. You didn't do a tayalis of grabbing him. But if you did a maisa to tire him out, says the Bialocha, that's not derech tzedah b'kach. Abay said, what do you think I'm thinking right now? But let's say I have something that it is the derech tzedah b'kach to make him tired. And can anybody think of a case where it's a derech to tire him out? You take a roach spray, which doesn't kill him. It's just like, you know, it makes him lethargic, Rabbi Yisai. And you take a roach spray and you spray it on him. Now, is that the derech? Of course it's a derech. That's what people do. They spray the roach spray on the derech. Now, if you're going to kill him, that's a different shayla. That's a shayla of Ritzicha and Ariga and whatever. different. But let's say you take a roach spray and you spray it on him and it makes him tired. So then that's the derech. And that's the derech how you trap them. That's a very, very normal derech. People do that. They spray it on him and then they scoop him out of the house. So that case, it's very possible that taka, that would be an essence to do on Shabbos. Now, Shem Azamin talks about spraying your Shem Azamin's in Shemir Shabbos in Perak of Hay, in Arul Amid Dalit, where he discusses spraying the roach spray, but you're not spraying it directly on him. And he says, the mice, you spray it over there and then the animal just gets tired and mainly goes out. So he wants to say that's not called Seidah because he might just run away from the spray and your tachlis is really just to get rid of him and you're not trying to trap it, but you're going to spray it directly on him. If it's just going to make him lethargic and then it's going to make him easily to, you know, sometimes you have these really fast ones, especially in our Seidah right? So you're going to go and mamish spray it on him so that you can chop him because sometimes he's too quick for you. So that could be saying, now it's not the Raisa because we said that a juke, as they're called over here, the little, uh, these uh, uh, jukalach, you know, these kakarochalach, right, these kukarachalach. So these guys, 
They're not their ISA. Nobody has a cockroach collection. So your starting point is, is that it's only a drabana. The whole sage is only drabana because it's aim bamin and itzad. But al kapanim, that would be aser. Which brings us to one of the most famous and fundamental shilas in all seder. There was a tremendous machlekes, Rabbi Yisai, on Shabbos, are you allowed to catch an ant? I don't mean the one that's married to your uncle, Rabbi Yisai. I mean an ant, an ant. My wife is English. I say aunt. Right, it's whatever, something like that, auntie. But an ant, are you allowed to catch an ant on Shabbos? Kumtz again, goyin mershleim is daman. I would say this is one of the biggest chedushim that he brings in the gans from your Shabbos kelchasa. And he says, listen, listen. Even though if you have a sick animal, we said that there's no isidaraisa, but there's still an isidarabanan to catch a sick animal. So Shlomo Zaman explains to Lom this, why is there an Isidra Abundant to catch a sick animal? Let's say a deer is sick. So it's not the Raisa because it's called Fatrapped. But why is there a Drabanan? Says Shlomo Zaman, because there's a Xera that you're going to come to trap a deer. It's very normal. You'll make a deer, Xera Shava, deer, deer, right? So you'll come to trap a deer. It's such a very normal thing. You'll come to trap a deer because you trap this deer. This deer is a min. It's a type of animal which is shayich to have a deraisa. So therefore, even in the situation right now, it's as if there's a trap on him. But since there's no physical trap on him, so therefore there's at least an isidra bun. But says Rishalim and Zalman, but what if I have a type of an animal which is a slow moving creature, which is easy to catch? Says Rishalim and Zalman, and that is not even a drabana and it's mutter gomer. Says the gomer, unbelievable chiddush. Shalom Zalman says, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to catch a cockroach because he moves fast. You're not allowed to catch a deer. That's a deraisa. You're not allowed to catch a deer that's sleeping, or because that's also deraisa. He'll the second you get him, he'll jump and run away. You're not allowed to catch a deer which is sick, because that's still drabanan, even though he's very easily to catch. But a slow moving animal, a turtle, a shlom zaman will hold you can catch a turtle. A shlom zaman's gonna hold you can you can catch an ant. This is the shita of Goyin Rishon Mazam, and he says there's no gzera. There's no gzera or to a different animal. So therefore, there's no gzera. As he says, the Goyin Rishon Mazam. Now, by say, this chiddush Rishon Mazam is a very big chiddush. First of all, you could have learned the whole entire gzera differently. And definitely, Rav Ozna, for example, in Shevet Levi, he has uh, the Koibitz based ladies in Chelek Vav in the 50th page. And other Akhrainim, the Sinkarelits, for example, other Akhrainim, Revelyashi, for example, there's a different way the Gamre to learn the Xero. They learned the Xero was that Soif Soif, this animal didn't have freedom. Uh, excuse me, Soif Soif, this animal had freedom. And you're taking away his freedom. So even though it was very easy, so therefore it's not a Deraisa, but you Soif Soif, you did something, you took away the animal's freedom. So it should at least be still an Isidra Abanan. And therefore, they learn that even on an ant, there should at least still be an Isidra Abanon. That's how they done on Rishle Mazalman. But Rabbi Yisai, Bechlal, there's a big shail over here, Lechayra. How could you compare? When you have a deer, the deer is something that right now has a metzias of where he used to be able to run around. And now he's trapped. He's, he's physically trapped from his tiredness, to, you know, he can't move, his sickness, he can't move. So that's called he's trapped. So there's a trap in the deer. An ant is something which is totally free. Mm. An ant is something which is totally free. That's how he moves around. That's his freedom. So that it's called trapping, l'chayr, right? But more so, the kashi you can ask him a shlom is l'chayr the balabatish kai. Rabbi say, you know you have an ant and he's crawling around on the, sometimes on the countertop, he's crawling around. You look there, all of a sudden you see him. Two seconds later, he's gone. Where'd he go? You look around, you can't say why. He found a little hole he can get into. It's true, Rabbi say. If you see him before he gets to the hole, you'll be able to grab him because your hand is faster than him. But Rabbi Yisai, how can you say that an ant is a slow-moving animal? If Rav Shlom Azama would have been talking about a slug, I'm from Flatfish, I remember they used to have those slugs there. Do they still have them? I don't know. Right there when you wake up in the morning, right there, yeah, on, the, on the walkway over there. I don't know if they're still there anymore. If you're talking about a slug, that's a slow-moving animal, and there's nowhere he can hide, and there's nowhere he can run. And I understand there's Shlomo Zaman on a case like a slug. But Shlomo Zaman is talking even about an ant. Great Shlomo Zaman is talking about an ant. An ant is something that he can find a little hole, and he can get in there. And then you can't get in. So I don't even understand there's Shlomo Zaman inside the Balabatish kite. Great Shlomo Zaman, I have Pachat to even talk about Shlomo Zaman. But this is why Rabbi Isai, most of the Chayinim did not accept the Chiddush of Shlomo Zaman, certainly not in an ant. Certainly not in an ant. Even in a slug, it's a massive chiddush, and it's a tremendous negay in Afghanistan. Sometimes you have a slug in the sukkah. 
right? You have a slug in the sukkah, and you, or you have ants on the countertop. You want to just like scoop them up and throw them out of here. Says Rishon Mazamin, it's a problem of moksa. So that's the only problem. So if it's moksa, do it with a shinoi, or if it's a graf shalrei and it's something revolting, you'll be allowed to do it. But the other place can say, no way. No way. You take that ant and you scoop him in there. You have a problem of saved the Rabbanon because an ant is something that had freedom until now. And he's something that could get away from you. And therefore to do it is an Issa Rabbanon. It's not the rice because nobody has an ant collection. Okay. A slug, you can hear a little bit more. You can hear a little bit more because a slug is something that Taka Mamish can't move and Mamish can't hide and Mamish you can do. So yeah, Shladen, yeah, you are in the sukkah. And it's pretty gefarlich. You want to go to sleep and you look and you open your eye and who's next to you? Like a whole mishpach of slugalach. Not geschmack to go to sleep. It's ruining the mitzvah. And it's also making you mitzvah. And maybe you'll be mitzvah putter from the mitzvah. So now we have to dan. Yom Tev Tzayt is also us, don't forget. But what is it? It's a slug, which is a b'minu nitzit, which is durabanan. And if it's only an isa durabanan, so Rishlam is saying that on this isa durabanan, it doesn't even start. Because it's a slow moving animal. Now, some argue on Rishlam Azamin, but the whole Shaila we're dealing with is a Durabanan. No, it's a Durabanan of Tzedah that Rishlam Azamin holds. It's not a Durabanan at all. He holds its Mutter Gomer because it's a slow moving animal. So there is no Tzedah on a slow moving animal. So I would have been a big Nati in that case that you could be Makal, and especially to save the mitzvah of Sukkah, because otherwise the guy's going to sleep inside. So that's what I would have thought. I would have thought they done different rise on Rishlam Azamin. Like they ask him Rishlam Azamin that the Chaira, that what was the name of the parak Rabbi said that you're learning? The name of the parak is Shmaina Shratzim. What's one of the Shmaina Shratzim? The Tzav. What's a Tzav? A Tzav is a turtle. So Shalom Azam says, not sure if that's true. Maybe when it says a Tzav is a turtle. So he says, maybe that's what Ben Yehuda decided. But who says that he's right? Maybe the Tzav, the turtle that they were talking about, is a totally different thing. I don't know. The truth is, I'm not sure about the whole Shiloh. There are turtles that are very quick. You get them in the water and they could definitely beat you. You know, Maybe it's only on the ground that he can't beat you. So maybe even Rishul Mazamlin would agree that there are certain situations where this guy is faster than you. So I don't know, but this is Rishul Mazamlin. They bring rayas from Rashi. They bring rayas from Rabbeinu Yeruchim. It's an old fight. If you're dealing with an Ein Benino Nitzayt, like a slug, and you're dealing with a slug that Taka, the Metzias, Taka can't get away from you, Bimokim Tsar, there would definitely be a <clears throat> to be Mako. That's what I would have thought. Which, when we start talking Rabbi Isai, about min nitzai and ain't the min nitzai, I think the first shiloh that we have is is what happens if you know your son is misbehaving and he's running away. Right? I was always very good. I was always giving chizik to the other kids that they should listen to their parents. But let's say he's running away and there he is. It's on Shabbos and you got to catch him. Mm. He's going to run to the neighbors. And uh, you don't want the neighbors knowing all the family secrets and whatever. So you got to catch him. So you got to catch him and then put him in his room. Or is that sod? What's the Shiloh if it's sod? Well, let's see. Is it, is, is, is it a min nitza to trap people? Is that a min nitza to trap people? What, what do you think about that? Is that a normal thing? I mean, in war, maybe. I mean, I don't think it's a normal min nitza to catch people. Uh, maybe uh, even in war, I don't know. Certainly not a normal time to go and catch people. It's not normal. But there's an unbelievable toysis and minachas and dafsam dalit. Unbelievable. Toysis and minachas and dafsam dalit. And this is the Avni Nazar's diak in Arachayim Simen Kuk Beitas. Toysis says that when you're taking fish and, and, and a child, that's the case of the sugi over there, where there's fish and a child in the water, and you're schlepping a rice, the fish and the child. <clears throat> so it says, Tais is lahalis dog in behalad dog in betinoik. So it says, Rava holds your chayev. You try to, you know, you're schlepping out the fish and the child, and inside there was a child also. So now you did a mice of, of a tzalz nefashis. Rava says, No, but it doesn't matter because what you were trying to do is not a tzalz nefashis. You were trying to fish. So you're still chayev. That's the Gemara. So says the Taisvis, unbelievable thing. This is not comparable from being oifah from yantif to chayl that we know that there's a sugi of hoyl. So says Taisvis, why don't we say hoyl over here? Name a hoyl, a patol Why don't we say hoyl that on the tinak that he's saving, he has a din of, pikuach nefesh and a mitzvah. So hoyl that on the tinak you're potter, says Taisvis. Therefore, the Hoyl should say you're putter on the team, I can never should be putter on the fish also. And Tysus explains that we only say that on Yontif and we don't say that on Shabbos. Wait a minute, says David Nazar. Hoyl u putter atinaik? 
What do you mean pater atinoik? What's pater atinoik? Pater atinoik means that there was a reason to be chay. If the Tysus would have said, you know, hoyl that you got a mitzvah on the tinoik, Tysus is not saying that because he's in the concepts of hoyl. Says Tysus, since you're potter on the tinoik, we don't chay you on the tinoik. So therefore, you should say that that tour extends even to fish. What tour on a tinoik? It sounds like there was a siva to be chayiv on a teamite, but we're being battering you on the teamite. Is Medayik Davdei Nezer? It sounds like over here that no, Batsim, there would have been seda on a child because Batsim is seda on an Adam. Elamai, the Torah about the Jew because Bikuch Nefesh. So why do we say that that tour goes also? Says Tyson, no, because we only say oil by Yontif as the oil of learned. And we don't say it by Shabbos. But the voice is an unbelievable kid. It says the Nazar. It sounds like me to me that from Tysis, a child is taka going to be a, an is a mina nitzay. And the Nazar says, of course, a child is not a mina nitzay. Now, by say, manoimar, manadaber, manadstag. There's no shaila that the achrayim mamish dandis. The mamish dandis. The makor chayim. I'm afraid to say this, but the makor chayim, the chavis yar, my zeda in seif siv gimel, sarch laayin. He says, if you run after your friend, if you have to run after your friend to catch him, I don't think he means cops and robbers. I mean, I think he means like real cops and robbers, where you're trapping this guy, he doesn't want to give his wife a get. I don't know. And the the, the, the basin gave the head there to Chapsich, or I don't know what. So he says, the Chaira, that's called Sad. That's called Sad. There's a first Shulchan Aruch, not like this. In Shulchan Aruch, in Ramak, in Simon Shin Lamites. I didn't tell you this, my Markim. I don't know if you have it in front of you, but there's a go and take yourself out of Mishtabura, look and see Shin Lamitas, look and see Dalid. And over there it says, Ain Donin. You're not supposed to dine in Shabbos. You're not supposed to dine in Shabbos. And one of the examples that the Shulchan Aruch brings over there, why you're not allowed to dine on Shabbos? Because hey, we might come to Kaisiv and whatever. But it says over there that this is why you're not supposed to put someone in Tfis on Shabbos. Those are, you know, the, shtet, the shtetl jail. It says over there, you're not supposed to put someone in jail on Shabbos. You know why? Because of the sugi of Ain Donin. Ain Donin is a sugi, it's like a, you're making like a, like a base din by, by Chapsich and Dov, by Chapsim and Dov. So you're not supposed to do that on Shabbos. But what does it say, Mefurish Rabbi Yisai, in the Shulchan Aruch, that the only potential problem is not sought? Because a person is not even an Ain B'midon Nitzit. He's Mufka from the concept of Tzedah, I suppose. I guess it's not Dumi to the Mishkin B'chlal. Now you talk after Dan. I'll leave that to the Oilem. When I trap, my son, let's say, God, my kids are already bigger than me, so I'm not trapping them. But when I trap my son, does that go into Ain Danin? What do you say? No, 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 no. Anything that goes on in my house, you know, what do we say to the kid? I own you, right? So that I'll let you decide, but it's certainly not an issue of Tzeda. Legabe, what are the Minei Nitzayid and what's not a Minei Nitzayid? It's very interesting. The Goin in the El Rabbi and Kalim, and Slav Perak Tezvav, he says mice, even, you know, this was 200 years ago, but he says mice is not a min mitzvah. That's right. The Gain says, Rabbi Kivager brings down on the Mogan of Ram by us that mice are not a min mitzvah. There's a Chai Adam. Now, when did the Chai Adam live, Rabbi Isai? It's around the time of Rabbi Kivager, around the time of the Gain. The Chai Adam was the Mechutan of the Gain. And in Kla Lamed Siv Zayin, he says, an Achber, who Dover should be min mitzvah. He says, yes, it is a min mitzvah. What's the nafkamina? The Mishabru and Sikotin Yitches by us, Mishabru discusses to put down a mouse trap before Shabbos is mutter. Because anything you do before Shabbos, no, that's Peseda. But to put down the mouse trap on Shabbos, as Mishabru says, don't put down the mouse trap on Shabbos. Why? Because we're afraid that that minute, the, 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 now it's interesting. And Mishabru says you can't put down the mouse trap on Shabbos. What's the longest? Sounds like because he might come in Miyad. He might come in Miyad. And this is why, let's say a person has a mousetrap in the house. He has, he has a mousetrap in the house. And he wants to know, in this room, we're not being matzliach. Can I move it to a different room? It was already down. So this shaila, the maisa, it's pashit ladaiti, that it's going to be aser. You're taking a mousetrap, you're moving it. And the Shabbat says, you can't put down a mousetrap on Shabbos. The chayra. Now, what is the nidain if a mousetrap is, if a mouse, excuse me, is a min nitzit or not, Brings us into a big shaila. You know, I went around, I made a list over here. A lion, the Mishabura says, is min nitzayt. Again, most of us don't have a law. I guess it's something that people trap and uh, you know, <laughs> bees. Are bees min nitzayt? Now, don't get confused, Abaisai. Wasps 
are not minitzai. That's for sure. Those are the stinging yellow jackets and whatever. Bees that make honey are they minitzai. The Mishnah Brewer wants to say, look and see if cotton your gimel, in Shartzi, in Tezvav, in Chof Aleph, and really, Taka, this is what it says in the Chayotam, in the Mogan Avram, they say that bees that make honey are not a minitzit. Now, what's this? Why would bees not be a minitzit? I'm not talking about yellow jackets. Those are for sure not a minitzit. I'm talking about a bee that makes honey. But they still want to say maybe a bee is not a minitzit. Why? It makes honey, and people do have bee farms and all bee, uh, uh, bee places. The answer is, says the Avni Nezer, Murdoch Avni Nezer, but the Avni Nezer explains in Orchaim Kupay Tes Oischav Aleph. He says, because bees, they don't trap them, they fakir, they let them have their freedom. So they don't trap them to chop them. Adarabu, the Taka let them have their freedom. No, once they let them have their freedom, so then maybe that's not called that they're a min nitzid. They're a min nitzid. And this is something that, you know, as we get used to, Flies are for sure not. Bugs are for sure not. Darach Hashulchan says cats are yes. Cats are yes and minnitzid. Snakes are yes and minnitzid. Okay, don't forget, sometimes you have a garden snake. It's probably not a minnitzid. Ants are probably not an, a minnitzid, et cetera. And this you have to done where it's like one by one through all the cases, right? I'll just throw at you one more thing. Interesting, Shaila, you could down where it's like. Mm. Actually, you know what? Let me go for one more moment. Let's go one more moment to the big Shaila over here, all right? Let's go for a moment to see Vav, and then we'll try to come back. You know, in see Vav, the Oilam learned, it's a Gemara in Saif Tav Kovav, that you have Yoshev Arishan al Pesach Umilayu. You have a person, he's sitting on the door, he's filling up the door, there's a deer inside the house. Okay? Bo Sheni the Yoshev B'Tzidai. Came another guy and sat next to him. It's Ava Bisha Amun Arishan V'Halachlai. Now what happened? Now the first guy leaves. So now the first guy leaves, the second guy is the one trapping it. So the way it works over here, says the Mishnah, is even though the first guy leaves, the first guy is Chayiv and the second guy is not Chayiv. Again, what happened? Comes Shabbos, comes a Yid, and he goes, and he stands by the door, and he blocks the deer from going out. There's a deer in the house. He's Chayiv on Seder. Now, says the Mishnah, a second guy comes and sits next to him. Now the first guy goes away. And the second guy stays. So now you're doing the tzeda. Says the no, the first guy's chayev and the second guy's not chayev. That's what it says in the Mishnah. It comes again, the Mogan Avram with a shayla. And it's really the Toysis Yontiv's shayla. The Toysis Yontiv in Perikid Gimel Reish Mishnah Zayin has a married to shayla. He says, what's the case over here? What's going on over here? Wait a minute. If the case is I have a man standing here by the door and somebody came and stood right next to him, Right? It's like, what's going on over here? L'chaira, at, at that moment, now, you know, they're standing next to each other together. Now, the first guy, he was standing by the whole door, blocking the whole door. Now, the second guy came, and they decided to stand together in the door. Okay, now, the first guy leaves. Now, when the first guy leaves, L'chaira, the deer, can get through. So now, when the second guy, he blocks the door, so the second guy's chayef. That's somewhat the Charlotte Tesis Yantiv. So before I go to the Taisis Yantiv, I'd like to read you a Rishash. The Rishash brings this Taisis Yantiv. I'll read you his Shaila first. The Taisis Yantiv is coming to answer up this Shaila. He says, it has to be that the case was we have man number one, man number two, and now they're standing together, but really the way it works was like a double door. So man number one was by the entrance. Man number two was standing in the, even in the, the, the entrance to the street. Man number one was standing a little further into the house. Now, man number one, says the Taisi Zantiv, it must be he went into the house. Taisi Zantiv, Kloimar, Lifnim al Tachabayas, Dila Vachi, what's the case? Heach Efshe Shasheni Yemale Makim Shalarishen, Meblites Trila Makim Pony. In other words, what's the case over here? The Titus Yantiv understood there's man number one, man number two, and they're standing, I guess, one in front of the other mamish. And now man number one goes away for a minute, and then two walks in there. So he says, that how could that be the case? How could that be the case? In Cain, the man number one had to walk away, and the door was open for a minute, and the deer can get out. So he says, then the second guy would be Chayev. So he says, that's not the case. The animal never had a minute that it wasn't trapped. This is really how they get out of the tomb of Tyra Shilas, you know, of the Thomas Mason in a hospital that's run on Pitaira, let's say, for example, Shari Tzedek, they have a, a double door, right? 
Because the way it works is that you're afraid that there's tumma in the building. Let's say there's a mace in the building, Halila. So now there's a mace in the building. So you have to make a matzah of where one door is always going to be closed. You know? So now if you have a situation of where one door is always closed, so therefore the tumma can't get out. If the door was open, if there'd be only one door, then they have to open that door. That second, all the tumma would go out. And for those moments, then everybody in the building uh, that, that's under the same roof, Akopanam is going to be Thomas Mace. A Kayan is going to be Thomas Mace. So you have a double door, says the Toysis Yantiv. The same double door over here. Man number one, man number two. And man number one started the whole problem. He trapped the deer. Now came okay, man number two, he's standing in front. Man number one leaves. So now the shot is there was no second that the deer was free and he's trapped. That's how the Taisit Zantav learns the mission. And he says it has to be. Because if the shot was that number one went away and the door was open for a second, even if it's open for a second, and then man number two comes in, that would be called that man number two did the actual trapping. Now, but my Ram Wuzger, the Rashash has a very simple balabatisha answer to answer the Taisit Zantav's kasha, but it's the same idea. He says he doesn't understand the whole shot of Taisit Let's say the case was like I said before. Man number one was filling up half the door. The boys say, go and stand by your door. And you're filling up half the door. Can a deer get through? Says the Taisis Yantif, the deer, it says a Rishash, a deer can't get through. So now I'll tell you the case, says the Rishash. A very simple case. Man number one came. At that point, he's standing half the door. Now, could the deer get through? No. Because once you're blocking half the door, the deer can't get through. The deer is bigger than the, half the door. So now man number one is standing there. Okay, man number two, he's standing right next to him. Now man number one goes away. Very good. The deer still kills, still, still can't get out. So the male, nothing changed. But it's the same idea that they both are of the opinion, and Kachas Mavur in the Mishtabura, and Kachas Mavur in the El Yerabah, and Kachas Mavur in the Prima Godim, and Eshel of Ram Sipkat in Yud Aleph, and the Chai Yodim in Sin and Lamed, Ois Dalet, and the Avdei Nezer, in Kuftami Gimel, Ois Yod, that if there would be one second that the animal can get out, if there'd be one second, the animal could get out. So then that's called that he's free and that you're retrapping him. Dainu, what are they saying? They're saying, Yesh tzedah, or tzedah. We don't say that since he's trapped for a second and now you can are retrapping him. They say, what are you talking about? When you're away from the door, now that's called he's free. You could technically run out. Now you come back, you trapped him again. I, you're going to say, what do you mean? I could get back before he's going to get there. Okay, but you have to do something to get there. But mitzad the animal, if you don't do that something, so then the animal's free. That's the sheet of the Taisis Yantim. That's the sheet of the Mishnabrua, La Lacha, and also like you saw, that's the sheet of the Rashash. Kum again, who are they coming to argue on? They're all coming to argue on the Halik and Mogan Avram. What's up, the Mogan Avram? The Mogan Avram. Scroll down to the Mogan Avram. Mogan Avram is he's caught in Yud Aleph. The Mogan Avram in Yud Aleph says, he says, I don't understand. I know the Toysis Yantif is wrong. How do I know the Toysis Yantif is wrong? He says, I, I, before I tell you the Lamdas, but I know the Toysis Yantif is wrong. Because he says, They live daily. When I was a Bacher in Yushalayim, so my neighbor said chicken loch, <laughs> little schnitzels. Uh, and it, it, by the, by, in the Haim Rabbi Yisai, some of us remember the Haim Rabbi Yisai. In the Haim, it was a normal thing to have chickens. As I say, Rabbi Yisai, Sikum Tois, how's the person going to go to shul on Shabbos? So you're going to say, what do you mean? He'll walk out of the door, and then I'll close the door. What do you mean? He's got a chicken in the house, Rabbi Yisai. That was normal back then. And he says, the second you open the door, if you believe in the Taisis Yantif, that if the door was open for a second, the chicken is called free. So then what did you do? You opened it, you freed the chicken, and then you closed it. You trapped him again. And this goes on all day long. So says what? Says the Taisis Yantif, what? I have to like, stand by the door and, you know, the whole entire time and like close the door as I'm leaving and that way he's never free, says the Mogad Avram, loy shamanu. We never heard of such a thing. El ha He says, no, we don't say that. El ha-mai, the Taisit Yantif and the Mishabur are wrong, says the Mogad Avram. And he says, keivan shukvar nitzid shari. That's it. And he brings Rashi. Hachanami came to hold Rashi because of Dein Zelik. What's the longest of the Mogad Avram? As you all hear it. One of the Mogad Avram is, is that a camera that is within my grasp, just like you understand, Chad is considered within my grasp. When I uh, uh, go after an animal and I trap him to the extent that all I have to do, let's say I close the door. 
And all I have to do now is run one time and I'll hop it. So that's cool. When, once you close the door, you're already Oivran Seda. Right? The second that you close the door, we say that you're already going to be Oivran Seda. Mm. So I say, Zakum Tais, says the Morgan Avram, so too, if I'm trapping the animal right now and I go outside, I walk outside, <clears throat> I'm trapping, excuse me, I'm trapping the animal right now. And I walk out, the animal's trapped right now. Let's say the chickens in my house are trapped right now. And I walk out for one second, since it's within my grasp to just quickly close the door. So then we don't say that that was called, the animal got freedom. We don't say that the chicken got freedom for that minute and I retrapped him. We say that since he's within your grasp, that's called that you never left. This is the grace of Machlaikis between the Mishapura and the Mogad Avram, the Mishapura. Obviously, that's our Paisik. He passed in the Chomer to like Mogad Avram. However, extremely important, extremely important. There's a bir alocha in Sivav, in Dibra Maskel, the Holach. And he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Will be Mako like the Mogan Avram. Remember, I told you before, it's very important to know what's the Rabbanon and what's the Raiso in Hilchas Seda, because there's lots of kulas on the Rabbanons. And the bir alocha was fully aware that this, this is a very impossible situation, right? So the bir alocha has two incredible. Kula's over here. And both of them, Taka, are born in Sivva, Dibra, Maskev, Allah. He says, if you have a Tzedah, Dirabanon situation, we could be Mako on the Mogad of Rab. For example, I'll give you two Tzedah, Dirabanon examples. One Tzedah, Dirabanon example, says the Mishabura, is what happens if it's, even after I would close the door, it's not called that I can get him in one running. Now, we said before, if once I close the door, I can get him in one running, that's a derice. But what happens if I close the door and I still can't get him in one run? So then that's only at Seyyidah the Rabbana. Says the Bialacha, in such an oifin, so then we're going to let you be mako like the Mogan Avram. The lumdus being that, look, the Mogan Avram is telling you this is Mutagamr, it's not called Seyyidah. And a Fazay Vite, anyways. And, I, and let's add a little bit, says the Bialacha. I'm an Enoi Miskavin. That's the Lushin of the Bir Alacha. I'm not trying to, to do it. I'm just trying to close the door. So what is it? It's a Psyk Reisha, okay? Right? It's a Psyk Reisha. It's only an Isidra Bonham. Psyk Reisha and Adra Bonham. What's the Drabonham? Because I still can't catch this chicken with one run. I'm going to have to run all around the house. But it's still nonetheless Adra Bonham. So Psyk Reisha. On a drabanan and the mogan of Ram is mekel agamre. The bir lacha was willing to be mekel. Dafkas is the bir lacha because the bais cuts the matter bechachria. But if the bais is gadol, it says there ubo miatzma v'deim b'tzei dasa l'rak the rabbanan. So then they weren't geizer. The bir lacha is answering the mogan of Ram. The bir lacha is saying that what are you saying, mogan of Ram? That how's a person going to leave to the shul on Shabbos? So the bir lacha says, I'll tell you. The chazal weren't geizer when it's a drabanan. You can say chazal weren't geizer. But if it's Daraisa, you bought the chicken Erev Shabbos and he was, you know, and, and, and you could get him right away. You'll be able to get him right away. So then that question is a Daraisa. So you can't say Chazal weren't Geyser. It's like the Bir Lacha. But if it's a matter of, even if I would close the door, I still can't happen. I can't have this bird. It would take me. I'd have to run around. And it's only giving me this Rabbanon. So now I can say Chazal weren't Geyser, but mark him that a person's not going to be able to leave his house. One Darabon. Then the Bir Lacha says, I also have a different example of a Darabon. Says the Bialacha, what happens if the animal is semi domesticated? If he's fully domesticated, it says in Shulchan Aruch, see if you'd base, there's no say that at all. A uh, cow, totally domesticated. But let's say he's semi domesticated, right? If he's uh, being moirid, then it's dry. But if he's semi domesticated, says the Bialacha, it means he comes back at night, he, he's, he, he knows where his bread is buttered, right? Or he knows where his chickens are fed, you know, he knows where his chicken feeds. So he's semi domesticated. So we bask in semi domesticated animals. The tzeda of them is only the Rabbana. So to be Allah, another example. Now you can hear, because I understood a person's going to have chickens. So the isra of trapping a semi-domesticated animal is only the Rabbana. Chazal weren't going to that the Rabbana. The muck and I'm not going to be able to leave my house. Adka. Now, Baisai, I want to tell you, I saw in a, a sefer, it says a chiddish, and I don't know if it's true, Baisai. I want to pass my friends in uh, the Tamil Chachamam over here. They'll tell me what you think. I don't know if it's true. He says, Lafi, what we just said, if you have a draw, and in the draw, you have a bug, a flies, whatever. You have flies, you open up the draw, right? And you take out, you know, you, I don't know, you, you have a safer there, whatever. You open up the draw, 
and you take out a safer or something, and you see this flies in the drawer. Okay. And it's obviously not big enough. If it's very big and I can't catch it, we said it had to before anyways. We said it's Psikresha, it's like Nikolay, and it's two Drabanans. One was it's aimed at me in a net site, and two Drabanan was that I can't catch it, right? And that was the Kula from the Ramah and the Meshavrua, that that's called I'm closing the draw and I'm not interested in the bugs. So we said it was a Psikresha, like Nikolay, and two Drabanans. I saw a certain Sefer, and he writes that, I'll read you the words, he says, Excuse me. He writes, Ima Aranaya Sagar, if the door, if the closet was originally closed and there were bugs in it, and now you open up the closet, and now after you finish what you need in the closet, yeah, but you know, you go into your closet to take out something to eat. And you see this flies in there. Okay. And it's flies that you'd be able to catch, let's say, right? So he says, Well, you open the door. So he says, now you can close the door. He says, Why? Because that's the Mish the Brewer. The Mishabrua told us that once something was trapped, and I'm just re-trapping it, so on a Durabanan, you could be Mako. So he says, look, this is also a Durabanan. It's aimed at Minanitsa. So Mimela, it was trapped. So on a Durabanan, you could be Mako. Abaisai doesn't say that in the Bir Lacha. The Bir Lacha doesn't say any Durabanan. The Bir Lacha says something with logic. Chazal warned Geyser, the Isra Durabanan of Tzedah, in cases where it's not going to be shaykh, not shaykh to leave my house and whatever, right? What the Rabbanans? The Rabbanan of like, you know, as other Rabbanan that I have an animal which I own and I want. So that's the case that Chazal were concerned with. So he has a chicken, which I own and I want. So Chazal said, in a case of where he's semi-domesticated or in a case of where you can't trap him, those the Rabbanans on the case, which is a normal case. So then they're not going to be geyser that you can't leave your house. I knew two things. Number one, not being able to leave my house is unbelievable. Number two, the Durabanans are chickens and things that you're normally going to own. So it's not Mestai Barchazal, we're Goyser. But Rabbi said, the Durabanan of an Ein Benmino Nitzayid, what's the whole word? An Ein Benmino Nitzayid is an animal that I don't have and I don't want. So it's not Mestai Barchazal, like Gozer. They weren't Goyser for the situation of what you don't have. So therefore, I don't think that there's any Raya from this Bir Alacha at all. I don't think there's any riot from the Bir Lacha to this. And the truth is, is that it's Kimat Mefersh, what I'm saying in that Prima Godem that we mentioned before. I'll read it to you. Um, the Prima Godem, uh, it's a little bit, uh, there's a riot brewer from the Prima Godem. I'm afraid to go into it because we're running out of time. I don't believe it's true. And Rabbi Isai, I don't think the Ramanda Mishabura believe it's true. Because the only act that the Ramanda Mishabura gave us about closing a closet is Mefersh, not like that case. It was only when we have Sikh Rachel, like Michal, and Tudor Abanans, that it was a bug and that it was a big area and I wouldn't be able to get it. Why did the Bir Lacha say another case? That if the door was closed and then you open it, so then you can reclose it. It's the normal case. And the Bir Lacha doesn't say that Mishabura doesn't say it. And therefore, I do not think you can be Mako in this case. The last thing Rabbi Isai, which I'll end with this Shaila is the big Shaila is when you have bees on Yonte for Shabbos and whatnot. And when I say bees now, I mean wasps and the Aim Benino Nitzah form, and he's ruining the sukkah. And you want to know, could you trap bees? Now I know, I see over here, there's can I know a lot of participants. I know if I would ask for a survey, I think many of us grew up. Yes, trapping bees and on Shabbos and Yontif, and many of us grew up not trapping bees on Yontif. And those that say it's mutter, they hold this mutter. And those that hold it's other, they hold it's other. Now, I'm not talking about when there's a child that's allergic or an adult that's allergic or a baby or whatever. Okay, that's a different shmooze. It could be a child of I'm not talking. I'm talking the now. I'm talking in a normal situation. You know how it is. And you know, Rabbi said, we all know what our father tells us. All right? He tells us, oh, no, 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 don't worry. The bee, he's more afraid of you. I don't know. I'm yet to make the bee that's more afraid of me, but so now we want to know, can you trap bees? What's the shayla? Very gishmak shayla. We know our boys say that the two extremes in Allah. There's very two extremes in Allah. Very gishmak. Right? That number one, number one, a snake is the first in Shulchan Aruch, that you're allowed to trap a snake when you're doing it to get rid of the snake. If you're trapping the snake to have the snake for its skin, you want to make snake shoes or snake belt, and that's an Isidar Isa, okay? But if I'm trapping snakes, says the Shulchan Aruch, in Shinta Zayin, Tziv Zayin, if it's Sad Nachash, to rid yourself of the Nachash, so then that's Mutter. 
This is one of the three things in Shabbos that it's potter of al, al- mutter. Why is it mutter? Why is it mutter? So this is a very big shaila, which I don't want to go into now. Mitad the Rambam, hooray, it should at least be a loch shein shvich legufa. I'm trapping it not for its skin. I'm trapping it to get rid of him. So it should at least be a malacha shein shvich legufa. And malacha shein shvich legufa should only be mutter b'makin pikuch nefesh. It's still, according to the Rambam, it's the raisa. If it's malacha shein shvich legufa, it's the raisa. Yet the Rambam brings this down malacha. So to make a long story short, there's a Mishnah about this. I told the Oilam to see a Magad Mishnah and a Mishnah and the Chashulchan. The Rambam has an unbelievable Chiddush. He says, the only time that you say Malach Hashem Tzich Legufa is when you're doing the Malach for a different reason. But what if I'm doing the exact opposite of the objective of the Malach? Rabbi say, what is Tzedah? The Malach of Tzedah is to acquire and to get the animal. What if I'm doing the Malach of Tzedah not to acquire, but to get rid of the animal? The Malach of Tzedah is to have. Here I'm doing it to get rid. The stake in doing it so that it doesn't hurt me. So the Rambam says that I go is not the Malach of Ichlal. It's not a Malach Hashem Tzich Legufa, because it would be a Malach Hashem Tzich Legufa, be an Isitar Isa, and it would only be Mutter B'Makim B'Koch Nefesh. The Rambam says, if you have a snake, it's Mutter, even if it's not B'Koch Nefesh, to go and trap him. Why? Says, as long as you're not trapping him for his skin and whatever. Why? Because the Rambam says, that's not a Malach Hashem Tzich Legufa, it's the exact opposite of the Malach. That's the sheet of the Rambam. Others don't hold like that. And they all know, you know why you're allowed to trap a snake? Because the snake is not B'Koch Nefesh. Let's say if it's B'Koch Nefesh, there's nothing to discuss. You could probably even kill it. The Shulchan Aruch says. But let's say you're trapping a snake, and you're trapping a snake because he's going to hurt, not pikuch nefesh. So the, all the other mafarshim, the like Rambam, they say it's mutter, and they have a much easier time explaining why it's mutter. Since trapping a snake is a malacha, she'ain't v'ich legufa, and all the other rishayinim, chutz and the Rambam, not all, but most, whole malacha she'ain't v'ich legufa, it's an isid rabbanan, so we didn't make an isid rabbanan, but makim has it. Okay, that's one extreme. So snakes are mutter. You're allowed to trap snakes. We'll go either with the Rambam. Pasht is more like the Paiskim, because Machshet Shirigufa is mutter, but Machim a damage. I'm not talking Pikuk Nefesh, obviously. The other extreme is it's Mefersh and Shulchan Arach, and that's a Gemara, that a mosquito, a parish, you're not allowed to trap. That's Mefersh. Why? Because that damage is obviously not enough damage. Therefore, you're doing an Isidra abundant of trapping an Aim Bamina Nitzay. What about in the middle? What about in the middle? What if I have something that the damage is obviously not a snake bite, and it's a it's obviously also not as uh, simple as a mosquito bite. And what's that? That's a wasp. What's the din? Am I allowed to trap a wasp on Shabbos, on Yontif? So this is side. It's very interesting. This is a mamish of world war. It's very, very interesting. And to me, it seems that it might be a machlekes between the Mishtabura and the Balatanya de Graz. Now, the truth is, is the Balatan near the Graz? It, it, it's Mefersh. The guy Graz, it's Mefersh. He says in Sif Yitzayin, in Sif Yitzchaz, in Sif Chopez, he says that if you have an animal that is Mitzayer Bilvad, all he does is he gives you, uh, we'll call it uh, Agmas Nefesh, if that's what you have. So he says, what's the din of an animal that's only Mitzayer Yu Bilvad? He says, for example, a mosquito. And for example, a tzira, a, a wasp, and zvuv. He puts them all together. He says, you're not allowed to trap them. So according to the Graz, there's nothing to discuss. There's no shayla. Because he learns that the heter of a snake with something, the lotion of the Graz is beautiful. He says, it's got to be something that has a bite. They have a neshicha. They're mazik the guf. They take a bite out of the guf. So a bee doesn't take a bite out of the guf. But when you look at Rabbi Yisai in the Mishnah the Mishabura brings a Lushin in Sivkot in Memvav, Bidafka Elu. He says it's only these snakes that you're allowed yes, to trap. Shemazikim Bitivan, Vinishikhasan is Oketes. But he says, but they don't kill. He says, Masha'en Kena Parish is Lake Tsar Kulehai. When he explains what's the difference between a mosquito and a snake, he makes a differentiation between the level of Tsar. A snake is a lot of Tsar. And a mosquito is not a lot of tsar. So he differentiates not between hezik or not hezik. The Balatanya says the chilik is, is this one hezik? And a parish is not hezik. So therefore, a, a, a bee is also not hezik. He doesn't take a chomp out of your body. Mashenki the Mishabrua, when he says it, he's mashma that the chilik is whether or not 
There's a high level of pain or a low level of pain. Now, I know that the level of pain of a snake is obviously a much bigger level. But you see that the measuring stick is what? The measuring stick is how much pain. So you know, somebody can come along and say that, therefore, a bee is also a lot of pain. And therefore, there is a big sad. There is a big sad to say that a bee you're allowed to trap on Shabbos. And this Lamaisa, you should know everybody saying, it might sound like a, a tremendous chiddush, but Yadua the Rebbe it was nicer to be Meiko. He said, look, according to the Rambam, it's mutter anyways, because it's the opposite of the Malach. And according to the Mishnah Brewer, the way we're saying it, it could be it's mutter also, because they weren't geyser tzeda, in a, which is Malach Hashem Tzrich Legufa, B'makim Tzar, and this might be called Tzar. And we'll add that the whole Shaila is only a Shaila of an Ein B'mina Nitzit, because we're dealing with a bee, which is a, a, a wasp, which is an Ein B'mina Nitzit. So therefore, a mosquito is for sure out. A snake is for sure out. Mashiach came when it comes to a bee. So then a bee is a big shaila. The balatanya is machmir. The mishabura ladaiti is mekel. What should a person do? To put up a bee trap, it's for sure there's a mark of be mekel, because that's a grum anyways, right? What should a person do? He should say in Yiddish, Bila, Bila, Gaia, Vek, Ich bin a kitten from Avram Avinu, and the bee will go away. And that's Hashem Abayisai. We'll continue next week. The next sugya, the grace of sugya of Chavala, Be'ezus Hashem.